Welcome to Essentials Explained. My name is Luke and in this video we will cover 20 Excel formulas that you need to know for a job interview. So I've asked ChatGPT to give me the formulas you need to know for a job interview. They've given me these 20 formulas. I am going to follow this list, but I will give you additional context on where it's worthwhile spending time and what things I would change about this list to make sure you are qualified for any Excel interview. We are going to use all these formulas to walk through analysis on our file. First one will be sum. So if I want to figure out the total sum of salary from all my employees, I can just use a sum and highlight the full array. Quick shortcut there, if you use alt, plus sign or alt equal sign it will auto sum your values for you so really really helpful for inserting a sum very quickly i will update and format it as we go and build out this file so next average let's say we want to understand the average salary we could highlight the average and that will give us the straight line average for all of the different employees in our database that is the same thing as doing the sum of the salary divided by the count of the salary, right? This is not a weighted average. This is simply the total sum divided by the count. I jumped ahead here, but I used count. This will just give you the number of numeric values. So we have 21 employees. Quick distinction here, this won't work for non-numeric values. So if you do this on rating, you'll get zero. You'll need to use count A if you want to count the cells in a range that are not empty. And that will give you the same. I would also make sure you know sum ifs and count ifs here. These are really helpful and really valuable for doing a sum or a count based on a set of specific criteria. If you're interested in those, I will link a video to these formulas above. So next our max salary. So if I use max on our salary, it will just give us the highest salary in the range. So if I want to learn who is the highest paid employee, I can do that. I could also figure out what's the date of the most recent employee that was hired. So if I do a max on the hire date column, it will give me the most recently hired employee in my file. I can do the same thing with a min statement. So if I want to learn which employee has the lowest salary, I can find that with the min formula, or I can also find the date of the first hire in your employee list. So next, if statements, I'm actually just going to put a column here just to make this really simple. And all I could do is if employee rating is equal to A, then return excellent. If not, return blank. If we just want to find only the employees that received A's and tell them that they are excellent because they are absolute rock stars. That is an if statement on a character value. You can also use if statements on numeric values. So if salary is greater than 100,000, then top earner, or else we'll call them blank. If I fill that down, now I just have the employees that are over $100,000. I can use if statements on dates. So if date is after 2019, 12, 31, then we're going to call them new hire, else we'll just leave it blank. If I fill out to the bottom, all my employees that have been hired since January 1st, 2020 are new hires. So this next section of formulas are all lookup formulas. V lookup, index match, H lookup, and X lookup all essentially do the same thing and were designed by Excel to do the same thing. I'm going to go through all of these, but my recommendation to you is use X lookup, get really good at X lookup. It will do everything you need to do and has greater functionality than the other formulas. So if you look up to look up our addresses, our lookup value will be our employee name, our table array will be our lookup table, our column index number will be two, and then we want an exact match. So if I fill that down, I get addresses for each one of my employees. You can also do that on the salary bucket. So my salary, my lookup value, my table array will be my lookup table, and then my column index number will be two. And I actually want an approximate match here. So I have gotten salary buckets for each one of my employees. Index match. So I can use an index, highlight the array of what I want, which is the address, and then a match to identify my row number. So my employee will be my employee name, and then my employee in my lookup table will be my lookup array. I'll use F4 to lock that in place, zero for an exact match. And now I have the address, again, just using an index match instead of a VLOOKUP. So H lookup, let's say instead we want to pull in the rating, but our table is oriented in a horizontal fashion. We can use an H lookup to look up our employee rating. Our table array will be our horizontal lookup table, F4 to lock that in place. Row index number will be two, as that's what we want to return, and then false for an exact match. 
I can fill that down and I have individual ratings for each one of my grades. This is broken because there's a space, but if I fix that, now you can see all of these work correctly. Finally, XLOOKUP. So this is my preference and I'll show you why. It is by far the easiest to use. It is the most flexible and has the most functionality that Excel offers. So let's walk through each of these examples again. If we want to find our salary bucket, we can use an XLOOKUP. Our lookup value will be our salary. Our lookup array will be our salary in our lookup table. Our return array will be our salary buckets. If not found, I'll leave blank. And then match mode, I actually want negative one for exact match or next smaller item. If I fill that down, I have returned the salary buckets for each one of my individual employees. Next, let's say I want the address. I can use an XLOOKUP to look up the employee name. My lookup array will be my employee name in my lookup table. My return array will be my address in my lookup table. And then for if not found, I'll actually just do double quotation marks to leave this blank. And I can fill that down. If you remember when we used index match and we used VLOOKUP, we got NAs here. That's a great part about XLOOKUP. They have this built in, if not found argument that will replace NA errors with a specific value. So if instead I wanted to put error, which I don't know if is better, but just to show you, now it will return error. So great part about XLOOKUP. Other benefit, at least over VLOOKUP, is it works vertically and horizontally. So if I want to do an XLOOKUP on the rating, the lookup array will be the rating in my table, and then the rating grade will be my return array. I can fill that down, and I've used an XLOOKUP to perform the same thing as an HLOOKUP, where a VLOOKUP wouldn't work in that instance. As an interesting aside, this is a great example of artificial intelligence not understanding the task it's being asked to achieve. It's gone through and it's scraped a million different posts on these are the formulas you need to understand for a job interview, but it doesn't have the cognitive ability to understand that you don't need to know all of these formulas, that if you are a master of honestly, even an index match, you can get away with it and don't need to know VLOOKUP, don't need to know HLOOKUP. My recommendation again is learn XLOOKUP. So this next one, date difference. This actually doesn't even show up in my version of Excel. It may for you. This is a depreciated formula that still works in Excel, but doesn't actually give you any of the hints. So you need to be really careful with it. This again is an example of AI I still working out the tweaks about what would be helpful. So if I put date difference between, let's say, our oldest hire and our newest hire, and I'll update those tags, so I realize that is a mistake on my part. And I put, let's say, D, that will give me the number of days. I should just lock this in the rows so I can drag it down to really show you what I'm doing. And if I change this to M, now it's giving me the number of months. Or if I drag this down one more time and use why it's giving me the number of years so what i'll say is this is a tricky formula and if you go to like years you can see how it didn't capture anything additional which is kind of tricky and honestly can sometimes lead to some issues so our next formula that chat gpt again recommends which i honestly never use is days so if you put end date and you put start date it will tell you the number of days between these you can also just subtract so if you select date of most recent minus date of oldest it'll give you the same thing i personally don't really think this is a super helpful formula you could easily do this with a subtraction operator which is probably a little bit easier but days is another one that chat gpt has recommended that you must know for all your interviews these next few we're going to run through really rapid fire so today that gives a current date it is valentine's day funny enough next formula is now this returns the current date plus the time in case you want to use it, right? It's Valentine's Day at 1044 AM, thankfully. I ran through those pretty quickly and let's jump into the text formulas. So our first one is left. So if I go left on my employee number and put two, now I've just returned the first two digits of each of my employee number. If instead I wanted to say left on the employee name and put 10, I've simply returned the first 10 characters of that string. The other example is right. So if I put right of this text and put three, I've returned the last three characters of that string. Not super helpful in this example, but if I pull in my address again, and I know the last five characters are my zip code, I can just put five. And now I have the zip code for each one of my employees, which is pretty helpful. So if I use the mid formula on the employee number, my start number will be one, number of characters will be three. I've returned the three middle characters from each string, right? 358, 488, 629. Where that could be really helpful is if you wanted to maybe pull out state abbreviations from these addresses. I will do this in combination with a search formula. So if I use mid of this text, my start number will be search to find text, open parentheses, within text, address. I actually want to add one to move my start number one character to the right, and then my number of characters will simply be two. 
And now for each one of my addresses, I've pulled in the state abbreviation from the full address. Concatenate, so this will combine two text strings. So let's say we wanted to use concat to pull in the employee name, and then maybe put a period, and then the employee number. This will give us a single text string with the employee name and the employee number. Helpful if you have an employee first name, employee last name that you want to combine into an employee full name. So substitute, this will actually just replace existing text with new text in the text string. So if our address, we wanted to replace all of our old commas with maybe semicolons, we can do that. And now all of our commas are semicolons. You can also specify the number of instances. So I've just said do it for all. But if I only want to replace maybe one semicolon, I could do that. And then I'd get a first semicolon and then commas for the rest of my file. So last formula, this will be trim. So this just removes all spaces from a text string. So what I've done is I've messed these up and I've added additional spaces, random spaces everywhere, just to show you how this works. So if I put trim and just select that text, now what Excel has done is it's fixed the spacing. So if I just copy this and just paste it back in, now all my formulas work. If you ever have an issue with a lookup that isn't working, it might be a space and you might have an additional space in your file that is messing up your formulas, right? If I go back, Clydesdale isn't able to perform this lookup appropriately. It's not showing anything because it's if not found, but I'm getting an NA here, even though Clydesdale is in my other table, but Excel can't match it because this has an additional space or multiple additional spaces. So what you need to do is double check that your spacing is correct in your lookup value, right? Even for this one, I just added additional spaces at the end. So pretty obvious with some of these, but pretty subtle for ones where you have an additional space at the end. You either go through and delete it like that or simply use the trim formula, paste it in, and now your lookups are working. So I'll fix all of those. I'm actually just gonna hide this column and then give you two really quick bonus tips here, which are different text formulas. So if you use upper, you can convert all of your employee names to capital case. If you use lower, you can convert a text string to lowercase. And then this is the one I probably find you'll use the most, which is proper, which will give you a capital letter at the first and then lowercase for the rest of your string. Just a couple of bonus formulas that you may want to use if you are cleaning your data or trying to make a more professional looking document. These 20 formulas we've covered will give you a great foundation to passing any Excel test. If you're interested in more Excel content, please check out the other videos in this playlist and on our channel.